How we doing, folks? It's your boy Marcos Metal Gear, episode 10, episode death, and we're trapped. We are prison, shirtless. At least they keep his shirt on. Let's take the phone call. You okay, Snake? Yeah. Nothing new to report. Snake, is there anything I can do? Yeah, my arm hurts. <sighs> Poor Snake. I'll increase the level of painkillers in your blood. Snake. Put the controller up against your arm. There you go. What? Breaking that fourth Don't worry. wall. It'll feel good. Huh? Okay, here I go. The controller is rumbling. How does that feel, Snake? A little better? A shiatsu massage. How did you do that? I stimulated your muscle fibers with the nanomachine cilia. That's about all I can do for you. Naomi, please talk to me. Say something to take my mind off the pain. What can I say? Anything. I... I'm not a very good talker. Please. Tell me about yourself. I love how I dropped the audio. Myself. Like that frequency in the back. That's a tough one. Any family? That's not a happy topic for me. I don't have any family. No, wait. There was a man who said he was my father. Where is he? Dead. Dead. By my own hand. I do Big it. boss. What? Big Boss? There was no way you could know. It happened in Zanzibar land six years ago. Only Snake and I know the real truth of what happened there. So, is it true? Was Big Boss really your father? That's what he said. That's all I know. And you were able to kill him, knowing that? It's cold. Yep. I guess shivers. How? It's what we wanted. Me. And him. That's mm. patricide. Yeah. That's the trauma of my life. Just like Mantis said. Mm. Is that why you left Foxhound? Let's just say that I needed to be alone for a while. And Alaska was the perfect place. Till Shadow Moses. Snake. I didn't have a real family either. Just a big brother who put me through school. We weren't even blood related and he was much older than me. Where is he? He's dead. dead. I'm sorry. I got everybody dead. Snake. All I know is murder. Is there a woman in your life? After you've been through as many wars as me, it's hard to trust anyone. That's my friends. view on life, too. Roy Campbell. <laughs> You're still calling me friend? That's awesome. Is that it? No. A quick he answered. There was another. Frank Yeager. <gasps> mm. Big Boss's most trusted lieutenant. And the only member of Foxhound ever to receive the code name Fox. Gray Fox. We hit something. I learned a lot from him. But didn't you try to kill each other? It's true. We did. In Zanzibar land. But it was nothing personal. We were just professionals on opposite sides, that's all. And you still call yourself friends? Hard to believe. War is no reason to end a friendship. That's insane. I first met him on the battlefield. He was being held a prisoner of outer heaven, but he didn't look like a prisoner to me. He was always so cool and precise. I was still green, and he showed me the ropes. You knew him well? No. We never talked about our personal lives. Sort of an unwritten rule. The next time I saw him on the battlefield, we were enemies. Dang. We were fighting barehanded in a minefield. <laughs> I know it sounds strange to most people, but we were just two soldiers doing our jobs. It's like a sport. It makes no sense. Just violence. That's exactly how it is to my friends after yeah. I haven't seen them in a while. Yo, you want to duke so it out too. in a minefield, bro? So if you were friends, then how do you explain the ninja's behavior? I don't know. It's your genes. They make you predisposed toward violence. That's weak. You really like talking about genes. Naomi, why did you get into genetic research anyway? I never knew who my parents were. 
or even what they looked like. I guess I got into genetics because I wanted to figure out why I am the way I am. So you studied about DNA? I thought if I could thoroughly understand DNA, I could get back my identity. No. I thought that by analyzing a person's genetic information, I could retrieve the blank spots in that person's memory. Memory is stored in DNA? We're not sure. But we know that a person's genetic fate is determined just by the sequence of the four bases in their DNA. So what about my fate? You know my DNA sequence, don't you? Your fate? I... I'm sorry. I have no idea. Of course not. Mm. You're a scientist, not a fortune teller. Yeah, yeah, sure. That, there was a lot in that conversation, man. What are you playing There's around There's a with? lot. So first of all, let's talk about the torture scene. Oh, let's talk about that. My poor man over here has got, got the runs. Damn it. <laughs> um, look at that poor dude. Oh, man. Come on. That's so childish. Um, the DARPA chief. So I think we could kind of talk about this being wide open right now that we're done with this. We could do a little spoiler here. That person we saw at the beginning of the game was not the DARPA chief. This is the Papa Chief. That first person we saw was Decoy Octopus, or Octopus, whatever the hell they call him. The other guy in Fox Town that they were talking about, you know, mistakes, blah, blah, blah. That's who that was. This dude right here lying next to me is the real Doppa Chief, and this is Hal Emmerich. Let's go talk to him. It's me, Otacon. Wow. They even captured you. Hurt. Get ah! out of here. It's so good. Way to treat the boy. Let me go. That hurts. Let me go. Ah. Hurry up. Snake, is that how you ask a guy a favor? Let me go. Ah. Hey. Ah. Jeez. It's like an animal's cage. What a smell. Yeah, because of him. Hi! It's the DARPA chief. If you don't hurry up and get me out of here, I'll be laying next to him. Those bastards. This lock won't open with a security card. You need a key like the soldiers carry. So what are you doing here then? I... I thought you might be hungry. If you need more food, I can bring some more later. Great. Give him a ration and a ketchup bottle. Also, I got you this level six card. It'll get you out of that torture room. Here, take this too. What's this? It's a handkerchief. I got it from Sniper Wolf. Why? I don't know why, but she's nice to me. Sounds like Stockholm Syndrome to me. <laughs> I was taking care of the dogs here. After the terrorists took over, they were planning to shoot all the dogs. But Sniper Wolf stopped them. She even let me feed them when I asked. She likes dogs. She must be a good person. Oh, that's some good rationale. Please don't hurt her. Wake up, you idiot. She's the one who shot Meryl. Well, that's all I can do. Wow. <laughs> They're planning to launch a nuke. I've got to stop them. Then you'll have to get past the communications tower. First, you have to get me out of here. Come on, I'm trying my best. Oh, that's that guard's got the key. You'll have to take him out. Give me a break. I'm no soldier. I can't take anybody out. You have to. I'll be killed. <clears throat> He's coming back. Oh, jeez. He's coming back. See you later. Wait. Wuss. What a straight. I mean, I don't got to blame He's got like a bum leg or a bum ankle or whatever the hell he's walking around with. Come on, man. Now, there's multiple ways of getting out of here. Uh, I kind of honestly, to tell you the truth, I kind of forgot oh, about the other ways. I think if you better. just, like, hide or something, look come out there, and I think eventually just with time you could actually, like, leave, like, they torture you or not. I don't remember. Either way, though, I go with the uh, ketchup bottle technique, where you just kind of just uh, lie on the puddle of ketchup and uh, make them believe that you're hurt. How about that one? 
Anyway, uh, the conversation with Naomi was loaded, loaded on so many levels. Hell? So I really like the first thing I like is when uh, they asked Snake if he had any friends, and now I'm like, oh, where are you opening the door, bro? You better die. Uh, they asked him any friends, and literally, as the word friends are still coming out, he's like, Roy Campbell. Shows you a lot. Even Campbell said, he's like, wow, after all this shit, like, I put you through, after, like, all the lines straight to your face, you're still friends with me. And it kind of, in that sense, really reminds me of Rambo. You know, Rambo is always friends with the Colonel, no matter what. And even, you know, the Colonel wasn't in a position 100% help him out. And, you know, you did, you know, thanks to the Colonel, he's actually went to jail the first movie. So, he was still, spoiler alert if you haven't watched it, um, it was still his best and, in that case, only friend. And then Frank Yeager, who, boom, all of a sudden, Naomi's like, huh? Frank Yeager? So there's got to be some sort of connection over there with Frank Yeager and her, just by the way she reacted. And there was another part where she had a very awkward pause at was when he was like, okay, so you see my DNA, right? You know, she said that the DNA is, or that your life is controlled by those four strands of DNA or whatnot. Or, I don't know many strands there are. There's a bunch of double helixes and all that mumbo jumbo. And I'm chafing over here to get past this damn, uh, this damn, uh, uh, uh oh, man, camera. Golly, I'm hammered. I, I'm forgetting all my words over here. Getting out of the holding cells, though. Now we're, we're coming into a very interesting part of the game. Actually, no, it's a little bit up ahead when we get to the communications tower. For now, we're just trying to get the hell out of here. Uh, and this actually is right across from where uh, you met, first met Meryl. Uh, I'm trying to get my bearing here now as myself. And it's kind of crazy how, like, you really walked by that room before you never had anything. And I was looking over there to see if the Dopper Chief was still there. Be like, all right, come on, decoy. You had to turn into it. Nah, you can't just be the Dopper Chief forever and ever. Pick up the porn book. Always a good one. I don't think I use it in this playthrough at all. Um, but it's always cool. You put it in front of them and they kind of just like stare at it they're like, oh, porn. Yeah. <laughs> so childish, so true. I mean, hey, listen, if you're walking around work bored as hell, all of a sudden there's like some porn on the floor. I mean, I don't know where you work at, but like, I would strongly like look at it and consider it and be like, yo, who dropped this porn over here? Matter of fact, I probably wouldn't pick it up. I'll tell you too, that's probably either a trick or it's shady or you're going to get some bad reputation. Even if you do pick up the porn, what the hell are you going to do with it? You gotta take it to your desk. You gotta go to the bath. Come on, that's just grimy, man. It's just grimy. I don't even want to talk about it. Um, but when we talk about the double helixes, the the DNA and whatnot, where you're like, okay, so you wanted, you got into genes to know your about your parents, and that fate's all determined by your genes and whatnot. That's great. Um, what's my fate? And she kind of just you get a couple three three dots. She's like, uh. And then he's he's kind of say his face. He's like, well, you wouldn't know that. You're, you know, you're just a scientist, not a fortune teller. She's like, all right, all right, all right. There's something there. She knows stuff that she's not telling us. She knows a lot of stuff she's not telling us. She's really one of the most interesting characters in the game. It's kind of crazy that one of the most interesting characters in the game almost isn't in the game. Like, you never actually see her. Um, she's just kind of somebody to talk to every once in a while. Uh, so, it, in that sense, it's pretty interesting, my girl Naomi. And I'm trying to aim this guy down. I got the worst aim ever in this game. I suck at aiming in this game. All, those, all that great aim you see in my Call of Duty videos, which isn't that great either, but the little good aim you see in my Call of Duty videos, yeah, that's like everything you don't see when I play Metal Gear. I miss all my shots. And I basically came down here because I figured since I was down here, I was going to get the real sniper rifle, not that little uh, suppressed stuff I got over here. And also just open up. I know I got the key card 6, so I can kind of open up everything. And make sure you watch out for these infrared beams. Now, I didn't even use anything because I know that they're there. And I, tell you, I still didn't think I had the thermal. There's your PSG one. Uh, but I think I died here before. That's why I knew Looks why they were going over there. Um, and trust me, I think the playthrough, I don't die ever, um, but I do die. I die a lot, and part of it's just trying to get the perfect footage, or the good enough footage that I consider. Nothing's really too, too perfect. Uh, and I got to discover the body, and I'm like, ah, oh, man, why would you go and discover the body? Now you're going to go call people up, and I'm thinking about, you know, I should go over here. And I don't think there's a button to kind of, you know, not shoot when you're aiming down. I think it's kind of a big pain in the ass, but whatever. Worked out over here because I missed them and he looked over the other way and I'm like, all right, come on, buddy, just just die, will you? All right, before they send all these other people out, and let me just get on my merry way. I got my little sniper rifle and I can go out there. You don't have to get it, uh, but I believe it's a little bit stronger than a suppressed sniper rifle. And in the original game, when you play into PlayStation, you have to go all the way back here. So I forgot to show you guys what it is anyway. And hell, you're over here. You might as well make the trip over here when you're coming down here. And also, if you need rations or you need to be full and ammo, this is the place to go to. It's a damn army for a reason. So you can always go there and get some stuff. Get some good. It's like a little shop, right? You know what I'm saying? It's like a little A and B. It's like a little A and J C Albert. It's like a little path mark. And she so knows right that just passed by something that said time bomb. How about that one? Now, I haven't, I haven't paid attention. I didn't realize at the time, but how about that? We got a time bomb on it. This should be interesting. 
So coming in over here, I see this guy saw me. I'm like, no, man, why would you see me? Like, come on, man, he's good on the radio. And I'm like, yeah, I gotta kill this dude before he like lets everybody know. And there we go. Just throw a ton of bullets at him. And I don't know if I ever figured out how to climb up on that thing. I think you could jump on it. I don't know. And if I got some SOCOM bullets. I'm getting a little bit worried because I'm hearing footsteps and I'm like, man, I don't know where these guys are coming from, where they're not coming from. You know what we got to do in these cases? Straight box it. Boom. No way we'll notice getting a phone call. Snake, there's a bomb planted in your items. Hurry, throw it away. Who the hell are you? One of them? You'll find out soon enough. My man, deep throat right there. Let us know that we got a bomb on our hands. Now I'm nervous though, because I don't know what to do. I don't know if the dance is up there. So I'm like, you know what? Let me just come over here. I don't know if there's anybody coming around me. I get another call. I'm like, all right, man. What's up? What's really good? Snake, get that bomb out of your items. Select the bomb in the equipment window and press the enter button to throw it. Hurry, throw it away. Yeah, I feel like that Colonel, but I'm kind of in a tough bind over here. I just can't be dropping bombs like this. It's got 17 seconds on it, so I'm like, man, I'm really gonna have to drop this bomb. And I accidentally shoot because I didn't press the button like it told me. And then it kind of just threw something. I guess threw like almost like a nade type deal. So whatever. I let it go over there. Shit happens. Shit always happens over here in the tank hangar. What could I say? Uh, the, the damn, uh, what should we call these things? The damn uh, infrared things are gone. So you can always just walk through there. Either that or I was just a complete G It went through it, but no, they're gone. Take my word for it. And I tell you, hey, man, I think it's twice where I had to, like, edit the footage there in a not-so-pretty way, because there's really nothing you could do right there, man. And the guy pain in the ass, just be careful, man. You're always going to have a time bomb after after you get out of the torture scene. How about that, man? They put in equipment. I mean, that means that Ocelot kind of knew you were going to leave, right? Assuming Ocelot's the one who put it. He was the one close to your stuff. He was the one torturing you. Who else could have put it there? Well, uh, Sniper Wolf wouldn't do it. She, she, uh, she wants to battle you out, so... Either Liquid did, but Liquid wants to battle you out too, so it's gotta be Ocelot. I doubt Raven will do it too. This guy drops over there. How about that? He's looking over at a body that doesn't exist. Also, big graphical leap at the time. The fact that when you look over forward, it kind of like smears the uh, the rain that's coming down onto your screen. Hey, right now it seems like nothing, but back in the day, that was crazy. I remember when the Xbox first, or the Xbox, the 360 first came out. The first NBA game. I remember seeing trailers where they were just so off the sweat on the players. Look at them back now. It's stupid. It's like, why the hell would you... Like, that's your big selling point. You can see the sweat. But I'm just trying to show you the, how powerful the graphics really were. That you could see the sweat on the players. Alright. Whatever. Uh, but at the time, it was cool. And, you know, same thing over here. You know, I'm probably sure something they pointed out over here in the Metal Gear series. They're like, you could... You know, the, the, the snow will melt in your face. Like, whatever. You can shoot these cameras out. Uh, or you can just chafe them. I, I kind of chafe them after a while just because my shooting sucks so bad. Uh, you know, I, I, it's kind of interesting. I think when I would fir when I first played this game, I never shot any of the cameras. I would always chafe them. But after playing Splinter Cell, I kind of assumed that you could shoot them. Even though they're completely different games, completely different companies, I was kind of like, well, if it worked there, why can't I shoot this camera? Let's see. Even playing GoldenEye, you know, you're kind of educated like, oh, camera, shoot it. Um, so it's interesting dynamic right there. Now you don't want to shoot it with somebody near you, you to draw attention. You want to shoot with an uh, unsuppressed weapon, you to draw attention. And I'm looking at this guy, I'm like, nope, there's nobody here. Absolutely. And you see that truck over there? That's the one you can actually lay in in a car in the, um, in the box. And they will, uh, it will take you from point A to point B. So that's pretty dope. <clears throat> Clear my throat out over there, man. It's just tough, man. It's on for like 18, 19, 20, 25, 65 minutes straight. Woo! And I had to bang all these, uh, all these videos out in one night over here. I'm moving this weekend and stuff, so it's gonna be it's gonna be crazy. I'm, I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to make Manic Monday. I'm gonna tell you right now, if there's a Manic Monday tomorrow, God bless my soul, man. Cause I, I haven't even started yet. I don't even know what class I'm. I haven't even picked them out of the hat. I know I'm preparing like a week or two in advance. This one, man, I'm lucky if I get anything. My good game's gonna be like 20 kills. I digress though. So a lot of a lot of talk about here between Naomi. You know what we told, learned about last time in the torture scene. We learned about Ocelot's true motives. You know the fact that he wants to reestablish Russia as a superpower, or so he says that that's his main thing. We also learned that look at that. In between, like taking this guy down, what we was calling the elevator. I'm like, yo, bro, listen. I'm just gonna toss you around a little bit. You know, beat you up a little bit, and then just take the elevator, all right? And I'm like, no, 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 don't do, don't do none of that talking part. Let me just. Can I get on the elevator? I'm like, can I please get on the elevator? This guy's leaving. I'm like, man, come on, buddy. Just go down. Respond. Yeah, whatever. I'd love to know who this guy is in, like, Command Central. He's like, what's going on there? Respond. He sucks, for starters. Because, I mean, there's so many times when, like, you can hear me shooting. You can hear, like, me punching the guy out like that. Ah! She should go over the mic to hear him. And he should be like, uh, you all right? Hey, Jimbo, you good over there? Yeah, you all right there, Jimmy? 
I don't, I'm not getting anything, copy. Jimbo, Jimbo. Takes him a little while to react over there. Now I went all the way down to basement two. I'm like, I'm pretty sure I gotta go to basement one though. I believe. I believe I could fly. I'm pretty sure, but either way, take whatever one eventually come out of there. You gotta go through the cycle. Man, you gotta go through the whole spot. You know where they captured us? You gotta keep pushing on forward over there. See what's going on there. We got that handkerchief. The handkerchief's good for when you go to the uh through the dog so they won't attack you. You put the handkerchief on, you smell like Sniper Wolf, and God knows those puppies love it. Talk about puppies, man. Let me tell you a quick story, man. So, the place I'm moving to is a little bit more, uh, well, it's a little bit more upscale compared to Newark, but anything's almost a little bit more upscale compared to Newark. Um, but there's a lot of people walking dogs around this place. Uh, and, uh, the, uh, actually, the other day I saw one of these guys, let's call him Chad for, for lack of a better name. And he was one of these do you lift kind of bros. Like, this guy was like uber jacked. He had this highlighter colored tight shirt on uh, with these like purple short shorts on. He's a bizarre looking fella. Uh, sweatband and all. And he was walking these two little like chihuahua type dogs, small ass dogs, who were just like booking it and dragging him. So here's our like, let's say he probably was pushing, I'd say he was pushing about a 200, 225. And he was being dragged along by these puppies. And, oh, he likes me. That's so cute. He was being dragged along by these puppies. So he walked by me, and I kind of just laughed. I, was, I just kind of, like, giggled a little bit. I was like, huh, that's pretty funny. And then I was expecting to say anything. I didn't even say that. I realized I was, I was looking at him. Oh, that's cute. And he was just like, what are you laughing at? Now, there's a couple situations. You go down here, you know, it's somebody it's keeping a real goes wrong kind of situation. It's, do you want to react and be like, uh, you? Or do you just want to like play it smooth and just keep going, act like you didn't hear him, or you know, be like, sorry, or I, well, I kept it real, I kept it real, real. I was like, you, man. And he just like looked at me, I don't think he was expecting me to answer, I just kept laughing, I kept walking, and he kept getting dragged along by his dogs at the way, so he didn't really have too much time to react. Uh, but pretty interesting about that, I was kind of surprised, I was like, what? Like, you really gotta like notice I'm laughing and talk back? Come on, man, you don't want being dragged over here by two chihuahuas, like, that's embarrassing. Ugh, alright, we're coming over here to the end of the episode. Got a very emotional scene at the end. At the end. Gonna walk over where Meryl was. It's tough. out of war. Snake, please, save yourself. Go on living and don't give up on people. Don't forget me. Mm. That's deep, man. On that memo. I'm gonna take this phone call next episode, man. It's too emotional. Have a great Sunday, everybody.